God, we just love you and praise you. Thank you, Father God, that we can come before you, Lord, and we can lay everything down. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you for meeting us here in this place, Father God. We don't take it for granted, Father. We just praise you and glorify you, Lord. Father, through your word today, may you draw us closer, Lord, and may you be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> I want to say hello to our Facebook uh, friends and family. Thank you for joining in with us. We know that you could be anywhere else. Um, hopefully, someday you'll be in church, right? Not just online, but we appreciate that you take the time to come on here at the River of Life. So praise the Lord. Um, and we always go back and read your comments. So thank you for commenting. And then we know that you're there. So praise the Lord. Um, and also at the end of service today, we're going to take communion. So if you can get your um, cracker and your juice or whatever you have, and if you want to participate with us, we invite you to participate with us. So God bless. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, today I want to talk about walking in the spirit. That is our goal for this year, uh, the theme that we've been talking about. And I have enjoyed it personally myself. And we will never, ever stop learning about the Holy Spirit. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Um, the Holy Spirit is a wonderful gift and so very precious. Jesus said in John 14, 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to help you and be with you forever. Praise the Lord. There's nobody that gives gifts like the Lord uh, gives to his children. So praise the Lord. Uh, the title today is called Spiritual Blessings in Christ. And this morning, uh, I started coughing, so excuse me uh, for that. All right, let's read Ephesians 1.1. Um, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Who is the faithful? He's talking to the Christians. Every faithful believer has life only in Christ Jesus. Uh, the term in Christ Jesus, in the Lord, in him, occurs 160 times in Paul's writings. 36 times just here in um, Ephesians. In Christ means the believer now lives and acts in Christ. Union with Christ is the reformed Christian's new environment. When you get saved, you have a brand new environment. You should not remain in the old. Amen? You do not hang around with the old group that you were hanging around with. You do not dress, walk, and talk like you was before. You are brand new. Uh, believers have a conscious communion with the Lord. And in this relationship, our lives are seen as the life of Christ living in us. At least, that is what's supposed to be happening when we get saved, we don't remain the same. Amen? We're brand new. Let me read Galatians 2.20 uh, for you. I'm going to read it from the board, Christy. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things, the old life is gone, and we have a new life in him. All believers have been crucified with Christ on the cross. We have died to the law as a means of salvation, and now we, are, now we live uh, through Christ for God. Because of salvation in Christ, sin no longer has control over us. Christ and his strength lives in us. 
So we do not have to sin. We have Jesus Christ living in us, and he's the one that gives us the strength and the power. So if we sin, it's because we chose to. Amen? Yes, there's things in life that um, we are growing daily, and things have to be pruned out. Um, but we cannot say that, oh, I'm just a sinner, and I'm always going to be a sinner, and I'll just go ahead and sin because that's who I am. No, Jesus Christ is living inside you. You have the strength to say no. Amen? So choose that, right? Help us, Jesus. And he's the one that does help us. It is through the Holy Spirit that Christ's risen life is continually communicated, um, continually communicated to us. And people want to say that we don't need the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit isn't for today. Um, the Holy Spirit is needed and wanted in my life and in this church. I always want to welcome the Holy Spirit. I want him to have his way more than I want our programs, our worship. Uh, we got three songs planned. If God wants to do five, he can have his way. Amen. So I always want the Holy Spirit to come in and have his way. And then we know we'll have a good service. Amen. It's not about our programs. It's about welcoming the Lord. All God's children need the Holy Spirit. Every single one of us need the Holy Spirit. Amen. This personal fellowship with Jesus is the most important thing in the Christian experience. Union with Christ comes as a gift of God through faith. Praise the Lord that God knows how to give good gifts. And his gifts are for eternity. Uh, Pastor Rick was up here talking about everything's going to expire. And yes, but the gifts that come from God will never expire. For all eternity, we'll have what God places in our hearts and in our lives. And we're going to have gifts that we don't even know when we get up there. So he's not done. So for all eternity, we're going to have the gifts that he gives us. They don't get broke. They don't get lost. They don't get taken away because we didn't listen to our parents. You know, and get grounded, and they take away the iPad and the phone and whatever. Um, those gifts remain, so nobody can take them away. Praise the Lord. God loves us, and he has given us his very best. Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our Helper. Uh, he has never left us. Praise the Lord. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. Our old life was disobedience. It was sin, condemnation, and death. Our new life in Christ, we have salvation, life in the spirit, abundant grace, righteousness, and eternal life. And that's an awesome new life. Amen. And I always like what Pastor Jeff said, it's not boring serving the Lord. People don't want to... Uh, change their lives. They don't want to come to church because they think they're going to be bored, but it's not boring serving Jesus. So to the faithful, let's read Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. We're reading Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Number one, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Number two, we are to imitate Jesus. Let's read Philippians 2, 1 through 5. Philippians 2, 1 through 5, just a couple pages over. Therefore, if there is any consolation with Christ, if any comfort or love, or any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, 
which was also in Christ Jesus. So we, t we are to imitate Jesus. Amen. Let the mind of Christ be in you and fill you up. Don't fill your minds up with junk. The things of the world, the things that take away your peace, the things that take away your joy. Don't fill your mind up with those things. And selfish ambition, having the attitude of, it's all about what I want and what I need. Think of others. We are to love others. We, to, we are to encourage. We are to lift up. God doesn't tear us down, does he? No, he builds us up and loves us. Even when we've messed up, he still doesn't tear us down. He holds us and helps us to get stronger. So we are to love others, encourage, lift up, treat, uh, don't treat but, uh, others bad. We are to imitate Jesus. We don't just love the lovely. It's easy to love the lovely. Uh, don't pick and choose who we want to love. Those people who might be unlovable sometimes, and they're out there, who are just plain mean, they need love too. Amen? Even though they're mean, even though they're unlovable, they still uh, uh, need love, and even more so because there's things going on in their life to cause them to be mean. Um, you might be the only bright spot in their day. So be encouraging and be loving, be kind. Don't snap back the way that they snap at you, right? So be kind and loving. Share God's love to others. This world is hard enough. Share some kindness and encouragement. God created individuals and loves each of us. Wanting, uh, wanting to, uh, to redeem us from brokenness and sin. God created the nations, and he loves them. Wanting to bring kingdom transformation into every dimension of our lives. God has a heart for the lost individuals and the lost nation, nations, and he invites us to collaborate with him to bring the kingdom of God into every area of life, both private and public. So we, we are collaborating with him, working with him. Amen? Amen? God is the one who had the idea of family and framed its parts. His purpose is that life might be multiplied and a God-given destiny for every individual to be established. So all the things that God wants for you and I, he wants for them too. Amen? Doesn't matter who they are, how they look, it doesn't matter. God loves them, and, want, and he's got a plan for them too, if they'll just follow him. We are all aware of the enemy that is warring against families all over the world. Broken relationships, abuse, loss of identity and value, a sense of abandon, abandonment, and orphan spirit is what it's called. Communication breakdowns, Rebellion, immorality are just some of the things that war against families. God wants us to engage, serve, and strengthen others. To help them see his purpose of life and destiny restored into them and through them. When God restores a person, when God saves a person, it's not just for them to sit down, but God's going to flow through you, reaching out and touching others. And I know some people don't like the word um, that we're Jesus' servants. We are. That's who we are, and that's who I want to be. Uh, God called us, not for us to sit down, but God to use us and to let his love flow through us and to reach out and to help. So we are to collaborate with him. We are to work with him and do what he would have us to do. God has appointed government in order to safeguard justice and defend peace within the nation. Rulers exercise delegated authority in order to serve the citizens who they govern. That's how it's supposed to work. The law of the king found in Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 21, warns those in authority against multiplying horses, wives, and gold. You'll find that, like I said, in um, Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 21. 
These three represent a lack of self-control in areas of power, sex, and money, leading the ruler into a lifestyle of, and help me, Lord Jesus, with these words, number one, authority authoritarianism good enough <laughs> it means a strict obedience at the expense of personal freedom so Melissa can you say that word for me authoritarianism I probably messed you up right <laughs> good enough okay number two here's another one hedonism there you go a belief that pleasure or happiness is the highest goal in life. And number three, materialism. A tendency to consider material possessions and comfort more important than spiritual values. All that we have in this world is going to fall away. The things that are spiritual are going to remain and they're going to be for eternity. So yes, we are to work. We are to supply our things for our family. We already have a home. We already have food and clothes and the quads and the things that we like. There's nothing wrong with those things. But we want more. More important is the spiritual values in life. Amen? God's alternative to these three unrighteous value systems is, number one, servanthood. Number two, purity. And number three, generosity. Purity in Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the only way possible is to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, having him forgive you of your sins. Praise the Lord. So you cannot be pure in heart all by yourself. You need the Lord Jesus. But since we are aware that our civic leaders are often pressed uh, to compromise in these areas, we must pray for them. We should daily be praying for them, whether you like them or not, whether we think they're doing right or wrong, we need to be praying and asking God to have his way. And um, God's the one that changes man's heart, not us, but our prayers can. And God's the one that does it. Amen. So we must pray and work to see every form of greed, injustice, and corruption end. And God's kingdom principles established in our nations. That's what we want. We want God's kingdom principles. Psalms 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So we need to all work to witness, share his love, that every nation on earth might know this blessing. And God has such a great plan for his children and for all who will come to him. I was just thinking when we were talking about the nations, um, Pastor Bishop, Bishop Charles and Judith had messaged me and said, Pastor Janet, please pray we need rain. The animals are dying, the people are dying. And just last week there was a praise report that God just flooded them. So they, they got their rain, praise the Lord. We don't think about it because we have all the seasons here and uh, oh, we're too hot or oh, it's too rainy. We, we have it all, so we don't think about things. But I never thought about um, with it not raining that people would die and that animals would die. And so anyway, so praise the Lord that um, they um, text and said, Pastor Janet, it rained, it flooded. So praise the Lord for that. So, um, God has such a great plan for his children and for all who will come to him. And that plan doesn't stop for us when we take our last breath. It's not over with when we take our last breath uh, here on earth. What a great and mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have a spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Let's go back and read Ephesians 1.3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So number three, he chose us. Let's read verse four, and then I'm going to read 11 through 22. Verse four and 11 through 22. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And 11. In him 
also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Let's always be a people that pray. Let's always be a people that have thanksgiving towards God. 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. What a great and mighty Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. You're so great, Father God. We just love you and praise you. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. There's none like you, Father God. We just give you praise, Lord. You are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So number three was he chose us. He chose us to be his people. And God receives as his own all who, will, all who will receive his son Jesus. Let's read John 1, 6 through 13. John 6, 1 through 13. John 1, 6 through 13. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen and amen. Salvation in Jesus is offered to all and contingent on their repentance and faith as they accept God's gift of salvation in Christ Jesus. We're talking about spiritual blessings. Number four, he, pre he, pre he predestined us for adoption. Let's read verse five of Ephesians one. Having predestined us to adoption, as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. The good pleasure of his will. It wasn't just his will, but it was the good pleasure of his will. Praise the Lord. God decided in advance to adopt us, bringing us to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. God knows before we are formed in our mother's womb uh, whether we're going to serve him or not. God knows that. But yet he still gives us the chance he gives us the choice to say yes or no. He does not force us. Let's read 1 John 3, 1. Um, 1 John 3, and it's 1 through 3, and I'm going to read it from the board, Christy.
First John 3, 1 through 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. And I so love this one, number five. We are sealed. We are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. We are sealed for God. Amen. Let's read verses um, 13 and 14 in Ephesians 1. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. As a seal, the Holy Spirit is given to believers as God's mark of ownership. We are God's, and that's his mark on us. Praise the Lord. Not the mark of the beast, 666. No, this is the uh, mark of his ownership of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Therefore, we have the evidence that we are God's adopted children and that our redemption is real when the Holy Spirit is present in our lives. And like I said, and people want to say the Holy Spirit's not needed, they're crazy. They need some prayer. Amen? Some loving prayer. <laughs> uh, so like I said, the Holy Spirit is needed um, for today and for every day and for all eternity. The Spirit renews us, delivers us from the power of sin, gives us a consciousness of God as our Father, and fills us with power to witness for Him. I'm going to say that again because I know some people are taking notes. The Spirit renews us, delivers us from the power of sin, gives us a consciousness of God as our Father, fills us with power to witness for Him. We don't witness um, because we just like to talk. Or just, when we go to witness, it's scary, uh, you know, because you don't know if they're going to receive you, put you down, what they're going to do. But So we don't witness in our own. We witness with the power of God flowing in us. Amen? So it's not us that when we are witnessing and somebody gets saved, it is the power of the Holy Spirit. So he fills us with power to witness for him. So like I said, I want the Holy Spirit, and I need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a deposit a first installment or down payment guaranteeing our inheritance. In this age, the Holy Spirit is given to believers as a down payment of what we're going to have in greater fullness in the future. I just cannot even comprehend the things that God has for us up there. I mean, uh, because it's great here with His Spirit flowing through us and uh, watching Him um, show up. So what's it going to be like up there? It's going to be awesome. His presence and work in our lives is a pledge of our future inheritance. I think we're going to be praising and celebrating in heaven. And we're going to be loud. Those people that like it quiet, they're going to have a problem. Because we're going to be up there just going off the wall, I think. You know, just in celebration of what he has done for us and who he is. And he, de he deserves all of that. Amen. It's not going to be quiet up in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, we're going to be screaming and, uh, because God is so good. I just, it, what a day that's going to be. Um, okay, number six and our last one, and I'm closing. Number six is his power. Let's read um, verses 18 and 19. And we're in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. It's his power. In order for believers to advance in grace, 
achieve victory over Satan and sin, witness effectively for Christ, they must have God's power moving toward them. Now I'm going to read that again because there's people taking notes. In order for believers to advance in grace, achieve victory over Satan and sin, witness effectively for Christ, they must have God's power moving toward them. So like I said, in all those things, we don't do it in ourselves. It is Christ in us. Amen? And it's his power. Uh, mighty work and power working in us. Uh, there's a song, Scott. Uh, mighty work and power. What's it say, Scott? Uh, <laughs> wonder working power. There you go. I get that in my mind, and I'll text Scott and Timmy, and I'm, I'm probably doing two or three songs at a time, but they get it for me. But yes, there's wonder-working power. Amen. Uh, so this power is a manifestation and strength of the Holy Spirit, working within the faithful believers. It is the same power and spirit that raised Christ from the dead and seated him at God's right hand. As for me personally... I want all that God has for me. I want all the spiritual blessings that he have, has for me. I receive them all. Um, I am not going to shy away from them. I'm not going to say that I don't need them. I want them uh, in all for the glory of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, God is just so good. And all the spiritual blessings he gives to his children. Um, and like I said, there's so many more blessings that we haven't even tapped into yet. Uh, but God's got a plan for each one of us. Praise the Lord. All right, Facebook, I'm going to um, go off here. But Timmy's going to come on and take communion with you. But I just want to say be blessed. And you can participate with us in communion if you'd like. But I just ask that um, uh, you just do it unto the Lord. You make sure that you're saved before you take communion. Amen. So um, be blessed. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next week. God bless. Jason Cohen's going to come up and help us pass it out. Awesome message. I really enjoyed that. Sometimes we forget that God offers us so much. We just don't walk in it. We don't operate in it because we don't realize what He has given us. Um, and I think that's, it makes it harder for us because we're trying to, when we're doing it that way, we're trying to do everything under our own power. You know, under our own strength, and I'm going to be so good, and I'm going to, if we just walk in the blessings that God gives us, yes. the spiritual blessings, it makes it so much easier. Yes. So today, for communion, I want to read 1 Corinthians 11, in this amazing small print Bible, <coughs> um, if God will bless me. Paul talks about communion here. And he says, those things that I have learned about communion. That when Jesus died, the night that he, that he was to suffer, he set this in motion and he took the bread and he said, take eat and do this in remembrance of me. I just want to talk about what that remembrance means. It's a lot like the sermon Pastor Janet just finished teaching. We need to remember the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. But like that song we sang at the end of the worship service, we need to remember, remember that he's the way maker. He, did, he didn't just die to forgive us of our sins. He didn't just die so we could be reconciled with God. That's the most important thing. Well, he died so we could have complete prosperity in him. That we can be set free. That we can be healed. That we can be delivered. That he's always behind the scenes 
trying to work something for our good. He is always behind the scenes making a way, whether we can see it, whether we can feel it, whether we know what's going on. He's always doing something. Last night, my brother and my mom, their family went through some horrible stuff. This guy ran through their yard and broke into somebody else's house and held them hostage until the police talked him down. I can't imagine going through something like that. But somehow, some way, God kept his hand on my brother and my mom, protected them from keeping that guy from going into their house. We don't know. We don't know if somebody's driving slow in front of us and we're getting all frustrated if we would have been on time, if we would have been in an accident because God's always working something that we don't know, that we may never know. But he's always there. He's always making a way, whether it's a way in or a way out. God's always making a way. And we need to remember that. That's the kind of thing we need to remember when we take communion. He's our healer. He's, our, he's the one that touches our hearts and helps change our attitudes and change our lives. And, and we can't even. There was a comment on Facebook when Pastor Janet was, was preaching that said, it, sometimes it's hard, but I, I work on it every day. And that's all that God's asking for. Is that we, we work on it every day. But we can't imagine that he's behind the scenes. He's there working on it with us, working through it with us. He's there to help us understand and help us and lead us and guide us. That's what he wants us to remember. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We talked about Jay's Cohen and Connor, how they're just always seem to be attached to the hip. But, but Jesus is always there no matter what. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're going through, no matter what's happening, he's always there. That's what he wants us to remember. He never leaves us, never forsakes us. His death and resurrection was powerful, but he is here now with us every moment. That's what he wants us to remember. So as we take the bread in remembrance of his body that was broken for us, in remembrance that everything he did for us, let's give him praise to take the bread. We just give you praise and glory. We thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross so that you could be here with us today. We just magnify and glorify your name, Lord God. And then he said, in the very same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Do it in remembrance of the fact that Jesus made a covenant that all we have to do is step into. Yes. Yes. A covenant, two parties have something to do. If you do this, then I'll do this. You have a covenant when you make your car payment. The bank says, if you pay your payment, I'll let you keep your car. That's my covenant. I'll pay for it up front. You can pay it back. And as long as you pay the payment, I'll keep your car. Or you, you can keep your car. <coughs> but Jesus said, I want to make a covenant with you that I know you can't keep. So I'm going to keep both sides of it. All you have to do is walk in it. All you have to do is receive it. All you have to do is step into it. That covenant that says we can go before the Father once again. That's the covenant that he made and he wants us to remember on that day. Take the cup. Father God, we give you praise and glory. We thank you that you made a way for us when there was no way. You made a way for us that we can't even make ourselves. Only you could make it. And we just thank you, Lord God. And right now we just pray that we can learn to walk in that every single day. Remembering the covenant that you made and the power that you give us to walk in it. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. If anyone on Facebook Lives need, needs prayer, leave a comment in the comment section. We will pray for you. If you're watching this again, leave comments. We check them. We see them all week long. We want to pray with you. We want to um, encourage you. We want to be side by side with you in this walk that you have for God. If you have a prayer request and you need a two, we'll be your two. The Bible says wherever two or three are gathered, he is there. They're missed. We'll be your two. We'll agree with you and God will get us through this. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Hopefully we'll see you next week. And remember, if you're in the area, a church alive is worth the drive. Amen? Come on over and see us. <laughs>